devotion and prayer live at 5 o'clock a.m. Monday through Friday at WHLJ 97.5 FM in Valdosta and Moultrie, Georgia. Also on Facebook Live on Mondays. You can also tune in by going to www.foxy97.com or call in 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. Evangelist Renee Sellers is your host. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where my pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III. And we're live on this Transformation Tuesday morning and so excited for another day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to, uh, we're live on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can join us online this morning at Foxy, F O X Y 97.com. And you can also join us on the conference call with these awesome men and women of God as they are coming in this morning at 267 807 9611, access code 266590. This morning, Pastor Wright is. Uh, celebrating within their convocation. So guess who is talking on this Tuesday morning? We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20, still talking about the weapon, still talking about the weapon of prayer from Ephesians chapter 6. The Word of God tells us to pray without ceasing. And as we talk about the whole armor of God, it is prayer that gives us the strength that is needed. It is the seal that holds the rest of the armor together. Can somebody write that down if you're taking notes? It is prayer that holds the rest of the armor together. So as we get ready to go into this devotion this morning, I'm going to ask Evangelist Paulette Griffin out of Las Vegas, Nevada, to open us up with a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6 verses 18 through 20. Evangelist Griffin. Heavenly Father, we've come giving you glory, praise, and honor, and thanking you yet for another day, another opportunity to be able to come before your throne room of grace. Heavenly Father, to obtain mercy, power, deliverance, and healing. Thank you for the Upper Room Outreach Ministries. Pastor Samuel Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers for bringing forth Command Your Morning Prayer Line right here on Foxy 97.5 FM. Thank you for each and every family represented upon the line, every ministry, as we gather together from the north, the south, the east, and the west to learn more of your word, that your word shall be planted upon good ground and come up into fruition as you called it to be. Lord God, we ask that you bless this precious woman of God, Pastor Dr. Renee Sellers, as she brings forth the word this day, we ask that you restore, replenish, renew, and refresh her for furtherance of thy kingdom work. Open up our spiritual mind, ears, and hearts to receive thy word this day right now, Lord God. And Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for all that you've done in our lives and what you're yet doing. Thank you right now as you're teaching us more, a deeper relationship with you and how to communicate with you one-on-one. We give you glory and praise for all things. In the matchless name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, one of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. We literally broke down, dissected one verse of Scripture on yesterday. One verse on yesterday. Ephesians chapter 6 says, verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance, and supplication for all saints. And for me, Paul, the writer, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So as we talk about putting on the whole arm of God, somebody say the weapon of prayer. Prayer is is the seal. It is the the, the the part of that armor that holds the rest of the armor together, and prayer gives us the strength to fight spiritual battles. You cannot do this on your own strength. Somebody said we need the strength of God. 
as the scripture says, be strong in the Lord, Ephesians 6 and 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We need the strength of God in order to fight spiritual battles. Somebody said the battle belongs to the Lord. So since the battle belongs to the Lord, let us use his strength to fight this battle. As the sellers, before I go any further, ask me a question on yesterday um, after we went off the air. And as I meditated on my answer yesterday, I want to share as the Holy Spirit began to download more understanding to me. And as Pastor Sellers asked me this question, uh, I had more time to meditate on the answer. My husband asked the question after we went out the air yesterday, why is it that some people don't want you praying for them? He asked me that question on yesterday. Why is it that some people do not want you praying for them? Well, first of all, uh, Jesus himself removed some people from the room <laughs> where when he healed people. Um, but I had several responses on yesterday after we went off the air, and if you were still on the call, you heard some of those responses. And there would there are many different factors as to why some people don't want you praying for them. But it doesn't mean they're not praying. Come on. It doesn't mean that somebody else is not praying for them. There are multiple reasons that people do not want certain people praying for them. But it does not mean that they're not praying. It doesn't mean that they're disconnected. It doesn't always mean, you know, that they're not talking to God, and it doesn't mean that they don't have people praying for them. But but the the, the fact is, as I, I begin to meditate on his question on yesterday, uh, my immediate response among several responses was fear, which is a product of unbelief. Therefore, after really taking time to think about what I said Fear or unbelief may be some of the reasons for some people, but in addition to that, for some people, what they're going through is just personal. For some people, what they're going through is is a private matter, and they just don't want to talk about it. They they just you know they talk to God and 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 they've had their moment with God. For some people, it, what they're going through is just private for them. It doesn't mean that they don't want people praying for them. For some people, this is just a private, personal matter that I want to deal with my own way. And some people don't want a lot of attention. We don't. Not everybody is attention seeking. We, some people just don't want the attention. It doesn't mean that when people ask for prayer, that they're attention seeking. That's what that's the spirit in itself. But some people just don't want people just all you know. They they don't want the attention. They just rather go through this the way they go through it. Some people want to deal with this situation on their own, and others don't want too many people involved in their personal affairs. There is nothing wrong with that. There are times when people want their personal health issues or their personal relationship issues, their personal financial issues, whatever the issue is, there are some times that people just want it kept private. So the fact that, you know, some people doesn't want don't want others praying for them, it does not minimize God's ability to move for them. Somebody write that down. So if we are aware, and I thought about this as well, if we are aware, then we're able to say why is it that some people don't want us praying for them. If we are aware that a person is not asking for prayer, then that means we know there's something going on where prayer is needed. Come on, somebody. And so I wrote this little note, and I'm a journalist. I write. I'm a writer. I have a whole blog uh, on on, uh, uh, on the Internet, reneeblogspot.com, reneesellers.blogspot.com. Check it out when you can. But I'm a writer. So, so I said pray anyway. The writer says pray with all supplication. For all saints. Somebody say pray anyway. So the weapon of prayer is my subject, but I want to add pray anyway as a subtopic. 
pray anyway. If you are aware that something's going on, if you are, you know, have, if, if we have to ask that question, why don't they want prayer? Why don't they want me praying for them? Then that means that we know they need it. So somebody say, just pray anyway. Whether they know we're praying for them or not, some, whether they ask us to do it or not, can somebody look at your neighbor and say, pray anyway? Pray anyway. It is our obligation, as the Bible lets us know, to pray without ceasing. Somebody say pray without ceasing this morning. As a matter of fact, we read from 1 Samuel on yesterday. We read from 1 Samuel on yesterday that uh, where it talks about uh, the sin of not praying for other people. If I cease to pray for you, it is my obligation, ladies and gentlemen, or our obligation to pray ye one for another. It is our obligation to petition the Lord, especially those of us who are the, of the household of faith. It is our obligation to keep one another held up in prayer. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, pray anyway, even if I don't tell you what's going on, if you think something is going on, if you assume something is going on, can somebody say, just this, this petition the Lord for me. It, it says in verse number 18, uh, supplication for all saints. Supplication for all saints. God's people, we went here yesterday, need prayer. You need prayer. I need prayer. And even if you don't think anything's wrong with me, just pray for me. Just listen, just be proactive in prayer for me, as I am to be proactive in prayer for you. Somebody say, just pray anyway. Uh, and, and so here it is, First Samuel chapter 12 and verse number uh, uh, 20, 23. Like Samuel, we sin against God when we fail to pray for each other. We sin against God when we fail to pray for each other. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 23, we read it yesterday. We're going to reiterate it again this morning. Just in case you missed it, just in case you forgot about it after we got off the line. It says, moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. As a matter of fact, a lot of us wouldn't be here today had somebody not prayed for us. We would have died in the car accident if somebody had not prayed for us. We would have been sleeping in our, in our listen, uh, 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 sleeping and, and on our way, as Deacon Harris said, to hell had somebody not prayed for us. A lot of us are saved today because of somebody's intercessory prayer. A lot of us are saved born again today because of somebody else's prayer. Somebody prayed for us, and then the Holy Spirit began to move on our behalf. The Bible lets us know how important it is to pray for one another, and it says in James number 5, James 5, verse number 16, it says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Somebody say, pray for me. Pray anyway. Pray for me. Pray for, watch this. A lot of things could probably be prevented if we are more proactive in prayer. As I said on yesterday, as my brother uh, uh, said, that when a leader falls, the people haven't been praying. When the leader falls, the people haven't been praying. And so James tells us, James encourages us, James chapter 5, it says, pray for each other that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And the NIV says that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So this particular verse uh, encourages us that there is power in connecting or it, there is power in communal communal prayer and the healing that can come from you and I praying with one another. Somebody shout amen and say pray anyway. There is what healing comes. It says, it says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. And somebody say, let the healing begin. Come on, somebody. And, and watch this. Even when there is a fault, when there is an issue 
with your brother and your sister. When they, listen, when there is an issue and they come to you, listen, pray for one another. When they confess their fault to you, when they confess their sins to you, even the sin that they committed against you, can somebody say, pray for each other. Come on, somebody, so that the relationship can heal, so that, that marriages can heal. Come on, somebody, so that the ministry can heal. And, and so James says, pray for each other. And, and, and so First Timothy 2 and 1. Let's go to First Timothy 2 and 1. Somebody say, pray anyway. First Timothy 2 and 1. It says in the uh, New King James, read it from the New King James, it says, watch this, it says, I exhort, first of all, I believe the King James says, I urge. It says, I exhort in the New King James, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Supplications, prayers intercession be made for all men, for kings. <laughs> this going to mess somebody up. They've been talking against the current uh, administration. Okay, never mind. Uh, it says for kings and all who are in authority. Can I get you to write down all this morning? Can I get you to write down all who are in authority, because the problem with many today, even believers, is we spend more time speaking against those that are in authority than we do praying for those that are in authority. I need somebody to write that down. This is Transformation Tuesday. We we spend, and, and, and watch this, this is why my brother said when a leader falls, the people are not praying. The, for kings and for all, can somebody say all this morning? This, this includes the president. Come on. This includes the vice president. This includes your pastor. This includes your boss. Come on, somebody. I know you got offended because your paycheck was a little short, but somebody say the Bible says pray for them. I, I know that you had a problem with something that was said, but somebody say the Bible says pray for all who are in authority that that they, watch this, no, no, does it doesn't say they. No, it says that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. In all that we, come on somebody, may lead a quiet and peaceable life. When we start being more intentional about praying anyway, then you'll start seeing a lot of things change. Paul is encouraging us in 1 Timothy 2 and 1 to pray for everybody, and he emphasizes intercession as a part of the life of the believer. Do you know that while we have certain people in the ministry that we call intercessors and we have certain people in the ministry, we call them the intercessory prayer team, do you realize that every believer is an intercessor? Every believer should be praying for other believers. Every believer should be interceding for somebody. To God be the glory. Every believer should be interceding for somebody. Uh, you, you should be interceding for the school board members. Come on. You be interceding for the city's commissioners, interceding for the mayor. You should be praying for all who are in authority. Ladies and gentlemen, and watch this now. Instead of lining up with those who are complaining about the current administration, who have are complaining about the past administration, and who are all already complaining about what's going to happen in November. Can I get somebody to tell your neighbor, pray anyhow, as a believer, begin to intercede for what's going on? Listen, let's talk about supplication, prayers, and intercession. What is supplication? Because the scripture says, supplications, it says, I exhort or urge you. Somebody say, are you praying for me? <laughs> Are, are you praying for me? Dr. Harris, I see you this morning. Doc, and I said it yesterday. I'm going to say it again because you're on the call. I said, Dr. Harris used, used, to, used to, you know, Doc, you're praying for me, Doc. You're praying for me. Yeah, I'm praying for you. But, and I said this yesterday, I know she is. 
But as I am praying for her, I know that she's praying for me. So, so Minister Leggett, are you praying for me? Uh, Sister Reed, are, are you praying for me? Prophet, I know you're praying for me. Are you praying for me? Because as I, this is why you hear people say sometimes, pray for me as I pray for you, because that's scripture. That's not just a cliche. <laughs> that's, that's not just a cliche. That's the word. We're supposed to be praying for each other. But the scripture says, let me break down supplication, prayers and intercession this morning. What what is the difference? What what is the what what is the definition of each one of these uh terms this morning? Let let's break it down. Remember yesterday we spent the whole fifty minutes on one verse. So supplication by definition is a form of prayer where we humbly and earnestly make a request or plead to God for a specific need or a desire. The focus of supplication, it is often personal, focusing on your own needs or for the needs of somebody else. Supplication involves asking God for help, provision, guidance, or intervention in particular situations. So as I said, as Pastor Sellers asked me that question on yesterday, uh, some people just want what they're dealing with to be kept private, and there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, and and it doesn't mean, watch this now, just because they haven't asked anybody else to pray for them does not mean they're not praying, and it doesn't limit God's ability to move on their behalf. It doesn't limit God's ability to move on their behalf. But since we know something's going on, guess what? Pray anyway. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the scripture says in 1 Timothy 2 and 1, supplications and prayers. Does it say the same way? Does it read the same way in the King James? Pretty much. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. And giving of thanks. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody say, and giving of thanks. Mm, We're going to talk about that, too. So let's talk about prayers. So we are to make supplication, we just define supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks for all people. So what is prayer? We know what prayer is, but let me give us a... a uh, Google definition this morning. Prayer, by definition, encompasses all forms of communication with God. Do you realize that some of the worship songs that we sing are prayers set to music? It's your breath in our lungs. I worship you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to, a prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. The song that we all know, been singing for years in church, every ministry, saying thank you, Lord. That is a prayer of thanksgiving set to music. And so, and so, so, so worship can be a form of prayer. And I said yesterday that prayer is not limited to our knees, but somebody look at your neighbor and say the best place to fight spiritual battles is on your knees. In other words, praying, but prayer can be standing. Prayer can be sitting. Listen, hands extended. It, it, listen, as long as you communicate with God, that's what matters. And so the general definition, prayer encompasses all forms of communication with God. It includes praise. It includes thanksgiving, it includes confession, and it includes requests. The focus of prayer, it can be broad, it can be varied, covers a wide range of situations. Prayer is a way to build a relationship with God. And as we talk about the weapon of prayer in the in Ephesians chapter 6, we're talking about putting on the whole arm of God. Prayer is what holds the rest of the armor together. 
Prayer is what gives you the strength to fight spiritual battles. You're not fighting. You're not warring on your own strength. And, and so pr- the focus is, is to build. One focus is to build a relationship with God and it, Express different aspects of your spiritual life. And so, ladies and gentlemen, prayer is communicating with God. Where Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 18, the weapon of prayer says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions and with all kinds of prayers and requests. And we talked about in the spirit on yesterday. We talked about praying from this from this verse uh, in the spirit. Uh, on yesterday, we talked about somebody say praying uh, in the spirit on uh, yesterday. And as I talked about this yesterday in the spirit, I said not tongues, but with your mind controlled by the mind of the spirit. To pray in the spirit means to allow the Holy Spirit to control the request we make and the attitude with which we make them. A lot of times when, uh, and I'm, 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 I'm giving God the glory, a lot of times you'll hear, especially those that are on command your morning and you stay on after we go out to prayer every now and then when I have the opportunity to do intercessory prayer or corporate prayer with the believers on command your morning, you'll hear me speak into the lives of those that are on the call. That is because the Holy Spirit is speaking through me. As I pray, and I know this happens with a lot of other people who are, uh, the Holy Spirit enables you (laughs) to prophesy. He enables you to speak into the lives of people. And, and, and this happens a lot for me when I'm in intense prayer. And this is why every now and then you hear me say certain things to people. Why? Praying in the spirit in Ephesians 6, not tongues, but with your mind controlled by the spirit's mind. And, and so and the Holy Spirit is controlling the request, controlling the attitude. The Holy Spirit gives you what is needed for the people even while you're praying publicly. And this is why it's important. That when you're praying publicly, while there is nothing wrong, with when you're when you're praying in a group of people and you're you're out to, to you know by yourself and you're in corporate prayer and and when you pray in tongues that's communication between you and God. But when you're speaking to people and Paul talks about this in First uh, Corinthians, uh, pray in English so that the people can be edified. When you're up and you're praying publicly. The, listen, when you start praying and you're in a public setting, and, and, and I said this at graduation, when the woman of God begins to speak in tongues, I was standing beside her and I said, what's the interpretation? And she began to release the interpretation. I was in another service where the woman of God was praying, was speaking in tongues, speaking out. Everybody else was quiet. He was speaking out. One thing to you and God communicating through when you, you know, pray in, in tongues, but speaking out, she began to speak out, and I'm standing there on the stage, and I ask, what's the interpretation? Because when, 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 when you're speaking out like that, everybody else is quiet, God is saying something. Who's going to interpret? And the interpretation finally came from the pastor. Come on, somebody. The, I, I waited. I, I said, okay. I didn't, hadn't given me the interpretation, but somebody had to catch it. Who's going to interpret? And finally, somebody interpreted it. So when you're praying, you know, the Holy Spirit will give you what is needed. So when you pray in the Spirit, you, you allow the Holy Spirit to control the request we make and the attitude with which we make them. In addition to that, 
Praying in the spirit enables us to pray according to the will of God. He enables us to pray in harmony. Come on, when you pray in the spirit, you pray according to the will of God. And, and to pray according to the will of God is to pray in harmony with the spirit. Let me say that again. To pray according to the will of God is to pray in harmony with the spirit. So that's Ephesians 6 and verse number 18. We broke down supplication. We defied prayer, pretty much communicating with God. We know what that is, praying in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers, Ephesians 6, 18. But let me take a quick break, and we'll define intercession this morning. We're live at 5, talking about the weapon of prayers with the subtopic, pray anyway. As Pastor Sellers asked me a question on yesterday, I had time throughout the day yesterday to meditate on that question. And I had time to meditate on the fact that it doesn't mean that people don't want prayer. He asked the question, why is it that some people don't want you praying for them? It doesn't mean that some people don't want prayer, but sometimes people just want privacy. Can I say that again for those that missed it? It doesn't mean that people do not want prayer. Sometimes it means they just want privacy doesn't mean, watch this now, and the fact that they want privacy does not minimize God's ability to move on their behalf. We're live at 5 this morning on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Satanville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can join us online this morning at foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com, and you can also join us on the conference call at 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. And sometimes the Holy Spirit, there have been moments that I was in a deep sleep and awakened to and, and the, the, uh, the Lord, because my friend always told me, you know, just give God credit. It was God. Don't deny what you see. Prophet is apostle now, Evelyn Sterling, because she was she didn't realize it, but she was mentoring me in the prophetic, and she said, "Don't deny what you see." And so there was a vision of a, a young lady uh, who's part of our ministry, and, and I was awakened by what I saw, and I'm not going to go into the details, but I called the parent, and the child was literally going through something at the time. And so while, and I said this, while in the natural, you might not be able to see everything, the Holy Spirit knows all things. But watch this, you know, God reveals to what he wants to reveal to who he wants to reveal it, when he wants to reveal it. It doesn't mean he's going to show you everything. He didn't show me what the child was going through, but he showed me they were going through. And I called the parent and began to pray because they were going through. And so intercession, we define supplication. We define prayer. Let's define intercession. Intercession, because the scripture says, in uh, 1 Timothy 2, it says, I exhort, therefore, first of all, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That's everybody on Command Your Morning. That's everybody working at the radio station. That's the sheriff, Pastor Sellers, if you work with the sheriff in five counties, that's the sheriff <laughs> in all five of those counties and praying that God will open up another one that we've been praying about. And so intercession is a type of prayer where one prays on behalf of others. So what the Lord was wanting me to do when he gave me, showed me that young girl, and, and which, which prompted me, watch this, because the Lord didn't give me every step, but he showed me the girl. So that was my uh, prompting to call and see what was going on. How can I pray for you? And so 
one of the reasons he showed me that, and ladies and gentlemen, sometimes the Lord will give you visions. He will show you. He, I'm like, if you're prophetic, he'll show you faces. I mean, I don't, I, I'm still learning how, how it all works. I'm still a babe when it comes to to to, to the prophetic ministry. Uh, I'm still learning how it all works, but I do know that he'll give you visions, he'll give you dreams, he'll show you images of people, he'll put some. Watch this now. There are moments that you can feel what other people are dealing with, even if you don't you know exactly what it is. You'll feel that something's going on. Sometimes you you'll feel there'll be something that goes on in your body because something is happening in somebody else's body. Come on, somebody, and that is what this. Now, this is why I tell people that a lot of times those, those little stomach aches and stuff like that, they're more spiritual than physical. Oh, Prophet, just read if I can if I can get you to come on and talk about it. A lot of times what you feel in your body, especially prophetic people, is more spiritual than physical. God is using you to help the people so you can't lay down on Sunday morning. And so it, it says intercession is a type of prayer well, one prays on behalf of others. It involves standing in the gap. We talked about last Monday the centurion who went to Jesus on behalf of his servant. He was standing in the gap for his servant. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I are to stand in the gap for other people. In other words, seek God's will and intervention in their lives. So when so as Pastor Sells asked that question, since listen, if we know there's something going on, even if they don't ask, even if they don't know we're praying for them. Can somebody say stand in the gap, intercede anyhow, pray anyhow. The focus of intercession, it is an outward focus concerning, concerned with the needs, the struggles, and situations of others rather than yourself. So this is why Pastor John Hanna in, uh, at the – Mega Fest that we went to one year, and I watched him over the years. He incorporated intercession in the act model prayer, act uh, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, and Pastor John Hanna out of Chicago added the I for intercession. When you intercede, this is not self-directed prayer. Can I say that again? So, so, so what First Timothy two is telling us? Yes, pray for 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 your needs. Pray for all needs, but then intercede for other people's needs. Can somebody shout Amen? Pray. Let watch this supplication. Praying for for what you need. Praying for uh, God. Uh, uh, making specific requests. Praying. Communicating with God. And then He says, intercede. Listen. Don't direct your prayer on yourself only. Pray for somebody else. Can somebody say, I'm standing in the gap. I'm standing in the gap for those on command your morning. I'm standing in the gap for my upper room family. I'm standing in the gap for Pastor Wright and she's in her uh, convention. Somebody say, listen, son, watch this now. We are here, many of us today, because grandmama stood in the gap. Aunt Dot stood in the gap. Bishop Ethel stood in the gap. There were those that stood in the gap for us. So ladies and gentlemen, can I get you to write this down? Pay it forward. <laughs> Pay it forward. Stand in the gap for somebody else. Hey, hey, let me let me read this. The, 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 the focus of intercession is outward focus, concern with the needs, the struggles, and situations of others rather than yourself. Intercessory prayer reflects a selfless. What did Deacon Harris talk about being in Sunday school Sunday morning? Being selfless, interceding for others is a selfless act, demonstrating a selfless concern and love for other people. First Timothy 2 and 1, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, supplications, and prayers, and intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Given a thanks describes prayer in which we rehearse the grace and kindness of our Lord and pour out our hearts in gratitude to him. We, we, we pour out our hearts 
and gratitude to him. One of the things that was talked about is the, the breath in our body. We we have it because the Lord is the Lord. And this is why we sing the song, It's Your Breath in Our Lungs. For we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So, so giving of thanks describes a prayer in which we rehearse the grace and kindness of our Lord, and pour out our hearts in gratitude to him. So somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to pour out my praise this morning. After I've made specific requests for myself and for other people, I pleaded for them, I petitioned for them. When I prayed and, and communicated with God through adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, I've interceded, I've Focus my prayer on other people. Listen, I've asked God to intervene in the life of my friend, my family, my community, the nation, governmental leaders. I've asked the Lord to intercede even for the current administration and for the upcoming administration. I've asked the Lord to intercede for the governing authorities, for those kings and all those who are in authority. I've asked the Lord to intercede for my apostle, for my pastor, for Bishop Hatcher. I've asked the Lord to intercede for them. I, I, I pray. Listen, I directed my prayers, selfless prayer, out of love and concern for other people. Then the Bible says, then the Bible says, and giving of thanks. Our oh, Lord, be thankful unto him, the Bible says, and bless his name. Be thankful unto him. Somebody say, and bless his name. And so the scripture specifically mentions kings, and all who are in authority. We must make sure that our leaders, political and ministry, secular and ministry, we must make sure that their names are consistently mentioned in prayer. As I talked about on yesterday, the importance of praying for those in leadership, praying for your pastor, praying for your president, praying for those that are in leadership, because if the enemy wants to break up a ministry, he's going to target the leadership. If he wants to break up a marriage, he's going to target the leadership ahead. If he wants to bring confusion and chaos, then he's going to more, listen, he's coming for, watch this, as he, as the, the, the main line of attack for you and I is the mind, he also targets leadership. And so, and so we must be in consistent prayer for kings and all who are in authority, most specifically for those who are serving servants of God. As Samuel, as first Samuel says, moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I would teach you the good and the right way. We, as I said yesterday, sin against God when we don't do what is said in First Timothy two. When we fail to pray for other believers. First Samuel twelve twenty three. God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Oftentimes you see in Paul's writing, he, he's talking about how he prayed, I have prayed for you. Jesus, I believe he said to Peter, I prayed for you. And somebody look at your neighbor and say, Pray for me. Because every individual is dealing with something. And if they're not even talking about it, somebody say pray anyway. Spiritual leaders need prayer more than anybody. And and one our enemy knows that when he, as Matthew 26, 31 talks about, if he strikes the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. As the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood enemy, Satan will use any situation 
good or bad, to attack the servants of God. He'll use discouragement, and that's a big one right now. This one has leaders quitting in today's time. Getting on Facebook and say, I'm, 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 I'm closing the church. I've heard one, one pastor say, we won't be there. We'll, we'll, be there. we'll be there for prayer tomorrow. But after that, discouragement. The enemy don't just fight the finances. He hits those things that affect the mind, the thinking of individuals. So he brings a, a spirit of discouragement on leaders, on leaders to, to try to get them to quit. He, he brings hopelessness, and he brings a fear to individuals. Satan uses every situation. MacArthur's commentary says this. Uh, he says Satan uses every situation, favorable or unfavorable, successful or unsuccessful, to try to weaken, distract, and discredit God's gifted men in their work of equipping the saints. One of the things that we know about Satan is he is the accuser of the brethren. And I have been studying monitoring spirits lately. I'm going to go, I'm going to ask Prophet Reed to take us in. I've been studying monitoring spirits lately. Those spirits that observe that, and, and, and remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood enemies. So this is, we have to understand that this is a spirit. And the purpose of these monitoring spirits, the characteristics, and we're going to go into prayer. Give me two minutes. (laughs) Key characteristics about monitoring spirits. Number one, they're observing, but often they're not responding. Observing monitoring spirits, are watching to collect data on individuals, focusing on their habits, relationships, and spiritual activities. What the enemy is looking for is any flaw, come on somebody, any minor flaw that he can use to discredit your leader. Why do I say your leader? Because you should be praying for them just as much as they pray for you. He's looking for any little open door, any, listen, listen for every little word, any little thing they can find, or the enemy is, is looking for anything he can find. And I know we, we focus a lot, I hear people focus a lot on people. I'm trying to focus on the source of this mentality, the source of this monitoring spirit, the devil, Satan. He, he's looking for any little open door to use to discredit you. He uses any situation to discredit you, your minor flaws to discredit you. And then what he'll do is nitpick and try to discourage you. The the spirits interfere with a person's progress. And the purpose of these monitoring spirits, one of the tactics of the enemy, he wants to stop progress. I need somebody to say, pray for your leader, pray anyhow. He wants to stop the ministry from growing. He wants to stop you from preaching. He wants to stop truth from being released. Though You know what the enemy hates more than anything? Somebody say truth. Somebody say truth. And when the truth is preached, the enemy does not like truth. And, and then he, he picks on your vulnerabilities. He, he monitors in an attempt to exploit your weaknesses. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Paul uh, says in the verse, pray for all saints with supplication, prayers, intercession. Pray for leadership. Pray for pastors. One commentary says, nothing will benefit you more than if God would enable us to constantly and faithfully listen, pray for those in leadership. There is power in the pulpit if there is prayer in the pews. Charles Spurgeon said this in his, in his writing entitled Power Plan. Charles Spurgeon says there is power in the pulpit if there is prayer in the pool, in the pews, 
But ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to pray anyhow. As First Timothy chapter 1, and I'm going to ask Prophet 3 to pray, it says, first of all, I exhort, pray first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That's it, everybody. The weapon of prayer, pray anyhow. Prophetess Inga Reed, woman of God, take us in with a word of prayer. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We want to say good morning, Daddy. We thank you for this word. We thank you for time in commanding our morning. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray and I ask that you will pour back into Dr. Renee Sellers all that she has poured out so graciously, all the virtue that she has poured out. Lord, as she has urged us to pray anyway, Lord, we are praying for all people of all nations, all colors and all creeds this morning. Father, we are praying for the brokenhearted, the lost, the least, and the last, oh God. We are praying that we will ask them, oh God, that you would just touch right where they are. We pray that this word has found each and every one of us to urge us to pray in spite of whatever is going on to continue to pray. Even if there have been no requests to pray when you have laid it on our hearts and woken us up early in the morning to pray. Father, we thank you for giving us the gift of prayer. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we lift up all pastors, oh God, every spiritual leader right where they are, Father, and we pray that you would continue to encourage them, oh God, to strengthen them on their inner man, Father God. Help them to prepare the word for the people to feed your people, Lord God, giving them fresh rain of word, oh God, for your people, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray right now that the scales will be removed from the eyes, oh God, right now so that they will be able to see you. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, so that we can see you. Father, you said if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray to seek your faith, turn from our wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven and heal our land. Lord, we are turning. We are asking. Lord God, we're seeking your face and not just your hand. Father, we're asking. We're crying out, help, Lord Jesus. Help, Lord Jesus. Father, we are lifting up right now in the name of Jesus, not just our spiritual leaders, but also our political leaders. Father, we lift up our President Joseph Biden and our Vice President Kamala Harris, oh God. We lift up every senator of every city, every state, oh God, in the name of Jesus, our U.S. Senators, Father. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we lift up our congressmen, oh God, our electors, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up our, our governors of every state, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, the lieutenant governors right now, in the name of Jesus, every attorney general, every treasurer, every auditor. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, every mayor, every city councilman, Father, we lift them up before you, oh God. You place them in position. Father, you put them in office. So, Father, we ask that you would touch them, oh God. Touch their hearts and their minds, oh God. Help them to do what you have called for them to do as you have placed them in office. Lord, help us to pray for them on a continual basis, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, that they will govern, oh God. This is your nation, oh God. This is your word. When you have placed so God, Father, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Lord, all of it is yours. We all belong to you, Father. So, Father, we pray right now and we give this back to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we repent, Father God, for not taking the time to pray for someone else. Lord God, seeking petitions, oh God, for those who are hurting and sick on, on their sick bed. Lord God, we repent right now in the name of Jesus for those who cry out with a 911 spiritual request. Lord God, we repent repent right now for not crying out and being intercessors, interceding on behalf of those who can't even pray for themselves. Lord God, we ask forgiveness, oh God, creating us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit that dwells inside of us, oh God. Stir up the gift of intercession that you have placed inside of us, Lord. Stir up the other gifts that you placed inside of us, oh God. The gift of prophecy, oh God. Lord, we ask for godly wisdom today. What would you have us to do for you today? Who would you have us to minister to, oh God? Who would you have us to pray for today? To pray anyway. Lord God, right now we are asking, oh 
oh, Lord, that you would give us the words. Lord God, not allowing us to pray our words, but what you would have for us to pray. Lord, there are some that are having surgery today, right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we ask that you would prepare the operating room, oh, God. Go in, oh, God, and cleanse everything in there right now, sterilizing everything. Lord God, the hands of the surgeon right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that they will come in and go out, oh, God, and have an excellent recovery. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare no scar tissues right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for backs being healed today, ears being healed, and eyes being healed today. Lord God, reproductive organs being healed today. For by your stripes we were healed. We thank you because healing is the children's bread. Lord God, we know that there are some that are looking for employment. Lord God, and we ask that you will help them to find it today. Lord God, you said to seek you first and your righteousness, the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added. So, Lord, we are seeking you today. What would you have us to do? Where would you have us to go? What would you have us to say and pray for you this day? Lord, we ask that you would have mercy on upon us this morning, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for blessing our going out and blessing our coming in, blessing us in the city and blessing us in the field today. Lord, we thank you right now for blessing us to be a blessing and all that we say and do. Lord, we pray that it brings you glory. We want to give get the victory so that you get the glory. Father, we thank you for showing up on our behalf today. Lord God, we thank you for healing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, for setting captives free. Lord God, we thank you for closing us in our right mind. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for blessing us this day. Lord, for this is the day that you've made. We're rejoicing and we're glad to be in it. Lord, we thank you for command your morning. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless uh, Pastor Samuel Sellers III and Evangelist Renee Sellers, oh God, in the name of Jesus, as they lead us in commanding our morning. We thank you, oh God, for blessing Mr. Lee and this radio broadcast and the radio station. Lord God, we ask that you continue to bless those who are hearers, but help us not just to be hearers, but doers of your word. We thank you, we honor you, and we praise you, O oh God, for you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, for every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. For those who believe, I encourage you to declare, I win. I am victorious. I'm going to pray anyway. The weapon of prayer, pray anyway. If we were able to get it on, the song that is requested today is Prayer Still Works. Those on the call, please remain on the line. Integrity. 